and welcome to Rolling With Two. I'm Will, and with me as always is the person who charges you 95 to get into the park, and then 950 once you're in the park. <laughs> Sarah. And today, we're doing a two-player perspective and accessibility for Dice Theme Park Deluxe Edition. That's actually why we have two boxes here. Yep, it is. So tell us a bit about this game. All right. And so, why we have two boxes. Okay. Dice Theme Park is a dice manipulation board game about creating and running your own fairground. The dice represent customers and the tiles represent your rides. Once a customer has enjoy your ride, their die value is reduced, but they can still continue to enjoy rides until their value drops to zero, which is when they leave. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins. And so I guess we should say that Everybody who buys Dice Theme Park will get this big main box, yes. right? Retail version. Retail version and the deluxe version get the same box. As far as we know, this theme pack add-on is what has a couple of extra like mini expansions, some promo cards, and really nice upgraded monorail pieces, which we will talk about more as we go along. Yeah. For the most part, if it says it has the deluxe edition, it means it has that extra little box. Yeah, of to go with goodies. It. Of goodies. All right. So it's Will, technically an expansion. Uh, yeah, it te technically is an expansion box. It's just there's very few places that sell it by itself. Right. I think you can find a few places, but right. that might come more and more limited. Yeah. Since I don't think they designed it to be mm -mm, a standalone. Sold, yeah, as a standalone expansion. Yeah. So Will. How does the game change for two players? So for two players, uh, it comes down to uh, the number of monorails that are used. So if you're in the retail uh, box, it's going to be cards. At the deluxe, it's going to be 3D monorails with little inserts in them. Uh, so the number of, of those that are used to choose when you're doing the initial draft uh, changes, just like when it comes to choosing the attraction tiles and the skill cards if you're playing with skill cards. Uh, those are all going to be the number of players plus one. Mm -hmm. Additionally, there is no bot. However, there are mascots. So <laughs> No nana mascots, no. but there's but a giraffe. There is a giraffe. <laughs> so those are mostly the changes. Okay. So issues at a two-player count is mostly going to be, since you don't see a lot of the tiles, the variety could not be there. Like, if you're looking for a blue tile specifically it might not show up or one that you want does not show up because you're just not going to see as many of them yes uh the so the tiles are divided into a and b stacks mm -hmm. and each stack is fairly dense because it can play up to four players mm -hmm. and so you need all those tiles however it doesn't mm, because it's the number of players plus one three tiles each round and this is only four to or, five, yeah, rounds, five rounds whether or not you're playing a short or what they call a standard game you're just not gonna see a lot of tiles in fact you stop seeing even eight tiles after the second round exactly so it, yeah it's just you're gonna see fewer of each stack yes but the you know the opposite of that what it does well then is you're going to have more variability between games so from game to game you're not going to see probably if you shuffle well enough the same tiles so you'll get challenged in different ways each time you play at a two player count yes okay well then, we shall move on to accessibility. Now, unfortunately, um, as you may have been listening, we've been talking about colors. And because they're using dice colors and tile colors, there are no symbols to represent these colors. So it might not be colorblind friendly depending on your colorblind challenges. Because there are yellow, blue, and green uh, dice and tiles. There are also gray tiles, um, but those are neutral. and. That reminds me. There might be another change for a two-player. Don't you take out number of dice when oh, setting up? that's right. I forgot with setup. Yes, you don't use all the dice. Yes. Oh, can't believe we forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> Addendum. Addendum. Um, so going back to colors. Uh, we were trying to see if there was any type of theme. And there is some, but not all of them. So we... Like some of the blue tiles are water-based. Some of the green ones are spooky, but not all of them. So we can't just say this 
n type of tile is always going to be this color. Right. So unfortunately, you might need to do some modifications, uh, like writing a letter on all of them. Or drawing a little circle. Or drawing a symbol or wh whatever. I think most people, if they're going to have problems, they're going to have problems with the green and blue. But I do know some people have problems with green and yellow. Yeah. Now, the one nice thing is uh, your starting setup mm -hmm. has a combo four tile setup. And at the very base, uh, which is the main gate, is a gray tile. Upright of it's a green, straight up is a blue, and up to the left is a yellow. So you do have all four colors represented right in front of you, and you know what they are because they're always going to be in that arrangement. So that if you grab a new tile and you can look at it and compare and just tell from the contrast, you know what to compare it to. That's true. So hopefully that would be another way to be able to get through it. And and the good news is because if you're playing a four or five round game, I think we just discussed at max you're gaining six tiles six at max. At max, because six you, new tiles. You start with your basic four, you get one for free, and then you have a chance of buying one each round. And if you play up to five, that's six additional yes. tiles from your starting four. Right. So you're not going to be managing a lot, and hopefully then you'll, like Will said, be able to compare to your starter tiles to match color. Yeah. So there's that. The other thing that's identified by color is there are gold cards for some of the rounds. Your first two rounds, you will never have uh, gold goals, um, cards. For the third, fourth, and fifth, if you play five rounds, they will. The weird part here is when you're randomly drawing these, you can only pick one of a color. So if you draw a yellow card, you can't use also the other yellow card. Most of them, it's because they're exact opposites, least and most. So they don't want you one round going for the most I don't know, dice yeah. or like yellow. And then the next round immediately trying to go for the least because you just don't have time to shift like that. Yeah. Now and, keep in mind that these gold card colors are separate from the actual playing component of this game. Right. Where it is not... I mean, they could still combine like a, a yellow card with needing yellow dice, but there that's just happens to be like an, a happy accident type of thing. Yeah, it's more that, that just that's what they chose to identify it. Yes. Um, this gets compounded when you have the deluxe edition because there are more gold cards. Yay! Except they pick some really poor colors. There's like wine or burgundy and purple, which can get easily confused with... Red the card. red from the orig from the base game and themselves yeah and themselves and plus the, the the deluxe cards aren't always opposites it, it's just more choices and for whatever reason the two choices they paired they just don't want them to be in the same game at the same time yeah now that is more than what most games do yeah. where they think about it, it's like well if i'm telling the players to go for this goal why would I tell them to go for something else that's pretty much contrary to that goal? Right. So they did put that extra thought in. Mm -hmm. It's just the identification of what those are. Right. It would have been so much easier if they had just written letters. So these are the two A's, these are the two B's, and just gone through the alphabet. Yeah. It would have been much more straightforward. And I've seen other games use that kind of identifier when dealing with cards. But unfortunately here, they're color. So... If you're having trouble with any colors, you might want to take a Sharpie and write, these two are A, these two are B, so that it's easier when you're going to set up, you don't have to struggle. Is this the purple one? Because like when I was setting it up to take pictures, I put the purple and the wine burgundy cards together. I'm like, wait, why are there four of these? And then I had to look really yeah. close. Yeah, they're not the same color, but they're really close. So yeah, that's not good. The only other challenge that we found is on some of the tiles, the... There are um, words or symbols on the dice uh, symbols. Mostly the words odd and, and even. even. The words are written in white, but the dice colors on the symbols are pretty light. Like, um, uh, let's see, we've got yellow, green, it's a light green, and gray is a light gray. The only one it has a good contrast with is the blue. So there you go on that one. But that's everything. So what it does well most of the icons are really unique and easy to see, so you're not going to have any troubles once you get the basic concepts of the game down. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, the rules are very comprehensive. 
Um, good breakdown of everything. If it's going over the staff cards, the next page, it's like, here's how every staff card works. So they put it in the section that it belongs in rather than just a addendum at the back, which is fine. That's yeah. another way to, to organize it. Um, but, but it is. But there's plenty of reference material if yes. you just have no idea. I think they do that also for the tiles. Yes, the tiles and all the symbology is clearly laid out. And the back of the rules has a pretty good reference. It's there's a lot going on in the game, so it's not completely comprehensive, but it does help a lot. And there's a reference card that everybody gets. And then lastly, most of the game is open information, except your hand of staff cards is supposed to be kept secret. Um, the good news is they are, um, what do you call it, identified by number. Yes. If you're having any issues there, you could look them up, I guess, in the book or, or whatever. If you're uh, Yeah, if you're just playing the base game, they're going to be the starting hand is going to be numbered one through six. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll actually be kind of uh, interesting because as you play those cards, those go to the person on your left. So you may have duplicate numbers. They'll still operate the same. When you add in the deluxe, it adds in a zero. essentially a zero because it has no number and a seven because it's a one and a six together because they're represented by dice yeah. for their numbers. And then you'll like replace out the five. So at most, you'll have eight cards in your hand if you're playing with the deluxe, mm -hmm. uh, but all other instances, you have six cards yeah. to look at. So and it, they don't change all that often. Right. And once you learn what the cards do, because there's, there's information on there, but it's not a lot of information. So um, yeah. hopefully that's all good. Okay. I think we're good there. Conclusion. Okay. For two players, would you recommend? I think so. It's still, it's a lot of fun. And the issues are just the flip side of the good things so it's whether you like it i guess yeah uh i had a great time with this uh i think we've tried a different game that was also dice themed from alley cat and like eh, i wasn't too keen on this this one had i felt had a lot of player agency yeah and it played very well at two players yes the end the points of player interaction was partly denial from mm -hmm. the drafting of cards and attractions and skills but partly in the fact that the staff cards you play go to another person so you're having a direct impact on what they can even do for their next turn which worked very well for a two-player game i think so too it's very dynamic yes so accessibility this is going to be mostly yes. It, it's really going to depend on if you have colorblind accessibility issues and what they are and the length you're willing to go to modify it. As we discussed, you could choose either the blue or the green and replace one of them with translucent. And that would mean it would be a whole lot easier to identify those dice. But you'd still need to go through the tiles and in, make some sort of mark or indicator um, with someone who can see all the colors to make sure you're not mixing up the blue and the green. And you'll go through that if you're one that wants to feel fully, truly independent. Mm -hmm. uh, or as I play it, I just ask Sarah. And it's like, hey, what is that color? Uh, and then just play from there. And I True. have no problems with that. That's the thing. It depends on the level of comfort you have with asking other people for help. Because with Will, he relies on me most of the time for most of the things that he can't see. So when we're going through and playing, I'm picking up all the tiles and just reading him everything, which includes telling him what the color is. And if he has something on his board he can't remember, I just say it too. So it's possible you can play this without modification because everything except your hand is secret. Just keep in mind that will add some time to your playtime right. because that point of the game in which you're like operating your theme park is supposed to be a simultaneous play, which actually cuts down the mm -hmm. game time for the majority of players. Right. So keep in mind, that's the trade-off there. Agreed. All right, and Sarah. Yes. When it came to all these attractions, was there anyone that you thought, ooh, that sounds fun? Um, maybe, I think there was like the, like, what do you call it? The Log River or something, Lazy River? Mm-hmm. I'm not much for fast roller coasters or scary things. So I, I've never been, an, I've never been a big fan of the fairgrounds. This is, this is how I experience yeah. going to fairs. What about you? I love one of the Shake Shack. Oh, that's true. Their fair food, yeah. as bad as it is for you, yes. is really good. I miss the, um, 
the oh, funnel cakes. Funnel cakes. Oh, God, I do miss the funnel cakes. Yeah. All right, and why <laughs> would you ever roll with just one when you could be rolling, rolling with, with two? two. And remember, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to us on the various social media platforms at... Rolling with two. That's T-W-O. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And if you have time, check out the other content Nanaman has found for you. Because remember, he's rolling with you.